Hi, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, uh, Mitch Ewan. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. You can see all the logos in the background, so you, just in case you missed those. And that's a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm really pleased today to have a very good friend of mine and also the founder of Hawaiian Blue Coffee, Dave Donald. Dave, welcome to the show. Aloha, Mitch. Aloha, everyone. Thank you. So we're going to be talking, Dave and I are going to be talking story today about the electrification of agriculture generally and generally, but more specifically, we're going to talk about Dave's electric tractor, which brings on the electrification. So Dave, uh, first of all, just to give us a little bit of background why you're even doing this, tell us about a little bit about Hawaiian blue coffee. Well, um, it, back in 2016, I found a little coffee plant on my property. It was two feet tall, and um, I um, inquired about it, and uh, folks told me it was 25, 30 years old, and was trying to figure out why it was only two feet tall, and folks said uh, coffee struggled in uh, Waimea, so I thought I'd give it a go, and uh, six months later, I had it flowering. And then um, I had all these seeds. <laughs> so I grew a bunch of trees and I planted them on a farm, a friend's farm in Lalamilo. And um, uh, they just started to grow like crazy. And the coffee that they produced was um, a specialty coffee uh, score. And uh, it, the plant, interestingly, was um, an experimental plant created as a hybrid by University of Hawaii um, Hilo campus professor years ago. And so it was a hybrid of Jamaican Blue Mountain and we're not sure, Guatemalan, Kona Tivica, we're, we still have to run the genetics on it. But um, uh, that's how it all began. And then I got really, the, the farm that I'm on is completely off grid. So that led me into wanting to continue that practice of being off grid and farming in a carbon neutral uh, manner. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of uh, farming and agriculture and power. And uh, let's uh, pull up the slide about the horsification of agriculture, you know, the biofuels. And uh, <laughs> would you care to comment on the horsification of agriculture, Dave? <clears throat> well, um, you know, that's, that's what we had uh, 100 years ago. We had horses or we had, uh, depending on the country, they used different types of, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, bulls or buffalo or whatever they had, you know. And um, um, luckily, I never had to do that. But the good thing about using horses is they're fertilizing the uh, the ground at the same time. Um, but they, they can compact the soil um, if they're on the soil for the same Land, piece of land for too long, just like a tractor. So that can be an issue for soil health. And of course, you have to feed them and water them and uh, take them to the vet every now and then because they get in trouble because they are animals. It's like having a baby for 20, 30, 40 years, however long they live. So, so they're beautiful, take care of them. like beautiful. many things, like we won't mention them, but they're beautiful, but very high maintenance, right, Dave? We won't go any it, further than that. They're they're fairly high maintenance, and um, I mean, you know, there's pluses and minuses. But uh, if you're doing any any kind of agriculture of size, uh, it's no longer feasible. Right. So let's uh, throw up the next slide and talk about the Dave's tractor. So <laughs> it is also beautiful, but it's low maintenance. So Dave, tell us about your tractor. Just so the top this, level, first of all, yeah. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's it's manufactured um, by a company called Select Track, um, and they're based in California. And um, <clears throat> a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, uh, told me about them in the first place. I wonder who that was. And um, th what mm. I like about this uh, tractor is it's got a forty-eight inch width, so. Coffee farms grow coffee in rows, narrow rows. And uh, if you need to get down those rows, 
um, typically your average tractor uh, is going to be a little bit too wide. So that I really liked about this electric tra tractor. And we're completely solar here with blue ion battery storage. So we have the ability of charging the tractor for free from the sun and uh, the carbon impact is zero. So um, it just seemed like the perfect fit here. And it's, it's uh, got a front end loader. It's a skid steer attachment in the front, but you have PTO power takeoff in the rear. So there's all kinds of farm implements that will fit on this tractor from various different manufacturers. So very versatile. So Dave, you're uh, getting way ahead of us ourselves here. So we, we will uh, bring you back a little bit, just rein you in as uh, we do with horses. Um, but let's uh, throw up the next slide. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, value proposition. So why electric? Why, why do we want to go electric? Well, I mean, you've listed it there. There's, you're not using deal, diesel, so you can't spill it. You, you don't have to pay for diesel. You don't have to pay for the cost to transport the diesel to you. We're an island. Um, and um, you know what your fuel costs are going to be because you're charging from solar. And uh, there's no diesel exhaust fumes. Diesel engines don't burn cleanly. They, they put off a particulate that floats up in the air and gently settles back down to the earth. And you can breathe that in and it's not very healthy for your lungs. Um, the noise is, is much less than a diesel. Uh, the electric tractor noise is much less. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, you don't have to wear, wear um, ear suppression uh, um, all the time. Similar to that, yeah, and um, you know, it's just good for the planet. And we're and there's there's a value to agriculture, whatever the product. I'm growing coffee, but whatever you're growing, there's um, a value to that product. Just how organic produce is more expensive in the stores than conventional produce. Well, um, produce that's grown in a carbon neutral fashion or a carbon negative fashion, there's a value, an additional value for that as well. So it's it's good for the farmer, it's good for the planet, it's good for the consumer. It's just a good thing. Well, good for you for recognizing that and being a true pioneer. I think, how many uh, electric tractors have we got in uh, in uh, Hawaii, Dave? Well, there, there was we one on, there, there was one on Oahu. Uh, and so this was the second one in the state, but the first one on Hawaii Island. Now I'm told that there's about seven in Hawaii. Really? Oh. And, and that was uh, the, the company used my purchase to really start to promote the tractors. So around five more were sold uh, thanks to uh, this purchase here on Hawaii Island. And that got folks excited. There's one on Maui for sure, possibly two. Um, so it started to take off now. And um, I'm pleased to hear that. And I'm looking forward in the future to getting my second electric tractor. Really? No kidding. I didn't know you were you know, looking for a second one. Is it going to be wider and longer and bigger or smaller? Um, I, I haven't got the stats yet. It'll be more powerful. Um, okay. But I, if it's wider, it would be 54 inches instead of 48. That's six inches more. So we'll see if that's doable or not. Not sure yeah. right yet. And you can reduce by reversing the tires. The problem with narrow tractors is the tippability. <laughs> ah. You know, and so if you have a heavy load on the front or on the rear and the ground is uneven, um, you can easily start to <laughs> fall over slowly. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. slowly, slowly. Well, let's throw up the next slide. I'd like you to uh, tell us a little bit about how you charge the uh, the tractor, what the system is at, at the Hall Farm. And uh, here we have a little uh, system diagram. So let's starting on the left and going to the right and then down, Dave, uh, like basically clockwise. Uh, give us a little bit of an overview of what, what, what you have that actually provides the energy to run this tractor. On the far left, you've got the uh, solar array on top of our barn. 
And then the blue uh, battery racks are um, um, blue ion batteries, uh, which are sold by uh, uh, Blue Planet Energy here in Hawaii. And then uh, to the right of that is uh, all your AC, DC conversion, or DC AC conversion rather. Um, and um, then down below, there's a picture of the plug going into the hood of the tractor. And um, what's really nice about this tractor is the battery management system can take both 220 and 110. So it automatically recognizes what you're plugging in. And so they provide you with two plugs. And one is for, they, they both have the same fit that plugs into the tractor, but at the opposite end, one's designed for 220 or one's designed for 110. So whatever you're plugging in, uh, the battery management system automatically recognizes that and adjusts accordingly. Of course, it's going to be a little faster on the 220, um, and you can usually charge it in less than eight hours. Um, and on the 110, maybe a few hours longer. So it's 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 really uh, it's great. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah, so let's, very uh, straightforward. Up, let, let's show, pull up the next slide and. Uh, we'll go through a, a couple of slides here showing you the capability of this tractor. So I, I, how, how about commenting on all the stuff generally that so, you have to move on a farm and how much time it takes and everything else, Dave, uh, that this thing solves? Well, you know, um, because it's a skid steer front end attachment, uh, that's a front end loader that I got from Selectrack. That was one of the options. Um, and perhaps in the future they'll have more options, but right now that was basically the only option they were providing at time of purchase. But um, I did purchase additional clamp-on forks, and they just they clamp on to the edge of the bucket, and they they're quite secure. The bucket is really solid steel. The, the tractor is very well made. The bucket capacity, the hydraulics, about fifteen hundred and fifty pound lifting capacity. What you see there uh, is just the bucket, not the forklifts attached. That's probably close to, let's see, it's all, just under 500 pounds. And uh, those are large sacks of neem cake. Um, I have lifted with the extended forks up to 900 pounds, um, but that's because the forks extend way past, the, they extend four feet after the tip of the bucket. So your leverage is greatly reduced. Um, but um, if I had a skid steer forklift attachment, <clears throat> I could probably get close to that 1,550 pound lifting capacity. Um, so yeah, you're moving sacks of, of soil amendments or jugs of neem oil or you know, insecticidal soap, uh, we're organic here. So um, everything we use is USDA organic certified. And, um, you know, it, all kinds of things. I mean, sometimes I'm moving uh, buckets full of coffee grounds. Sometimes I'm moving tools, whatever it might be, uh, horse manure. I move a lot of horse manure. <laughs> so Dave, in the good old days, you had to lug all that stuff around with a wheelbarrow or by hand, right? Right. And um, and so, you know, having a tractor, it's the core of your farm. You know, it's all your operations spin off the tractor. So you can take the bucket and tip it down and back drag if you have to even out a piece of land um, or you can, you know, scoop up boulders or w whatever the operation might be. And on the PTO, I mean, you can do anything. Um, whatever kind of implement. I'm uh, in the market for a manure spreader, PTO driven. And the reason for that is I make my own compost uh, out of coffee grounds and coconut fiber and horse manure and a few other things. And um, using the tractor bucket, you fill up the horse manure uh, spreader, um, but then you just run it in the station, you hook it back up to the tractor and you run the PTO in a stationary manner. Now, this is all electric. It's all battery driven. You're not burning any fossil fuels here. And you spew out that mixture and it mixes the compost and it's literally turning the compost for you and it makes a brand new pile. 
And then once the compost is ready to spread, you put it back into the spreader uh, weeks later and you drive down the uh, the rows of coffee. So, it, I mean, it's phenomenal. There's, there's nothing you can't do. They, they have an implement for everything. So let's uh, haul up the next slide. Wow, it's a real uh, Flash Gordon picture. What is that that we're seeing, Dave? You're in big fog, all this stuff spewing out. What What is that? Well, I'm not seeing the slide, but I'm assuming it's uh, the uh, the rear the rear mounted. Uh, I don't see it on my end, but it's I'm assuming it's the rear mounted uh, sprayer. Uh, there it is. So that's um, a Chima, an Italian sprayer, and it's a Venturi Air Principle. So that spray that's coming out of those six fishtails, how that works is a lot of sprayers, they just have a fan that just sort of blows the mist out. But this fan is enclosed. And so the full force of the air is funneled up that vertical green stack and then blown out through those six fishtails. And there's um, outlets and the force of the air um, breaks up the uh, the particles of water and uh, turns them into micro particles and you get this tremendous spray and um, that's just water I'm spraying there but uh, typically it would be something like neem oil uh, or it would be um, uh, you know organic insecticidal soap and that's all powered by that magic PTO or power takeoff unit we were talking about previously. That's right. It's just a it's a shaft. It's a rear uh, coming off the rear axle. It's just a horizontal shaft, and it bolts right onto the tractor, and right into whatever um, implement you're attaching. And it's got a three point hitch, so the hydraulics lift the sprayer right off the ground. And uh, there's the, the shot of the, that black shaft with the yellow collar, that's the PTO uh, shaft. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's phenomenal. And once again, it's, it's all run off an electric motor, correct? All electric, all battery, it's uh, lithium uh, ferrous phosphate, LFP, the, the good kind of battery, not the kind that explodes. Oh, so uh, let's look at a couple of the uh, specifications of this tractor. So. Tell us about runtime, charging, battery life, you know, all the kinds of implements you can get, Dave. How about going through the list for us? And what's okay. been your experience so far? Okay, so here it says three to six hours runtime. Um, and it, depending on load is the oper operative phrase. So if I'm just running it as a tractor with nothing attached to the rear and just the front end loader and I'm picking up manure and moving it around and driving around, um, I'll easily hit six, if not eight hours run, run time. Um, uh, if I am spraying with that sprayer, it, it's going to be greatly reduced because the, uh, the power demand is much greater. Um, maybe we're looking at closer to three hours. Um, so, you know, because I'm switching back and forth between uh, different operations, you probably average it out in the center somewhere around four and a half hours, something like that, maybe. But I mean, you get a lot of work done. You know, with that sprayer, uh, I spray, I can spray an acre in half an hour. So, uh, yeah, it you used know, to take you three days, didn't it? When you did individual plants, it got to the point where I was spraying seven days a week. Yeah. And now you can do it in half an hour. Yeah. Wow. And it's yeah. all electric. All electric, and the electricity is coming from the sun. Perfect. Solar coffee. <laughs> Let's yeah. uh, call up the next slide. I, I want to spend a little bit of time on the attention to details and your uh, your whole concept of higher uh, value ag uh, agricultural products, Dave, because you know it's this attention to detail that's making your coffee special. So talk. Let's talk about that. And well, how that and how that can be transferred to the rest of uh, Hawaii. Okay, so uh, HVAP uh, is the acronym for High Value Agricultural Products, and um, there's a lot of HVAP products. I mean, uh, vanilla, cacao, wasabi, uh, specialty coffee, 
um, uh, lavender, saffron. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, pretty much all of that can be grown here, although vanilla is, vanilla is being grown here, but it's tough because it has to be hand pollinated. The, the uh, original pollinator doesn't exist in Hawaii. Um, but um, where HVAP comes into play is um, agriculture is, there's not a big uh, return on investment, ROI. <clears throat> and um, so, you know, kids today, uh, they're, they've seen their parents work hard all their lives and they put all the kids through school and everything else, but land prices have skyrocketed. Everything has skyrocketed. And, uh, you know, farming lettuce or cabbage or whatever you might be farming, you're, you're going to make money, you're going to be able to survive, but there's so many other competing uh, jobs that are available that'll pay you a lot more money for a lot less hard work. But when it comes into HVAP, all of a sudden everything changes. The record, the world record right now, I think is $4,535 per pound wholesale for green bean coffee coming out of uh, Panama from a farm called 90 plus. Uh, you can go to 90 plus.com and check that out. And there's another one, Lamastus, um, uh, down in uh, the same part of Panama. And, um, They've been working hard for years, um, developing, uh, you know, a really uh, delicious strain or varietal of coffee, and they've been very successful. Well, we can grow that varietal here. In fact, I'm growing some, and many other farms are growing it right now on Hawaii Island. And um, if we pay attention to our processing, to our fermentation, and to our drying, and temperature, and humidity, and a number of things, uh, we can produce really high value coffee. Um, my coffee is selling a lot more than the average pound of coffee is, and yet it's at the bottom end of the spectrum with nothing but room to grow as I develop the flavor profile. Um, so I'm encouraging uh, younger folks who would like to get into farming but are discouraged by a low ROI to consider uh, HVAP crops and to see if there's something that they can do and they can enjoy doing and make uh, a fantastic living from. So one of the elements of uh, attention to detail and uh, swinging back to the electric tractor is that you have no idea, we have no idea what kind of flavor a diesel exhaust fumes add to your coffee. Talk well, about that, Dave. That's it. You know, uh, when you are operating fossil fuel vehicles, uh, th that exhaust is permeating everything. It's permeating your clothes, your lungs, and all the plants that you're growing around you. And, um, you know, in different stages of processing, if you don't have your, um, your drying areas uh, or your fermentation areas properly sheltered from cans of gasoline lying around or cans of diesel or vehicles running and providing exhaust, it does negatively affect. Um, and not just the smell, the noise, everything about it. It just, and inevitably you're dropping oil or diesel fuel in the pastures as well. So um, with the electric tractor, uh, that's minim minimized. And um, I mean, you still have hydraulic fluid and some oil for the axles, but uh, you know the likelihood of a leak is extremely low. So um, you essentially uh, remove that from the equation. So uh, I think it's a great advantage. Uh, I just you know I look forward to the day that I everything I own is electric or fuel yeah. cell. Well, that's that's electric. <laughs> that's it true. Says so, it says so in the statutes, which we. That's true. It took, it only is. took us five years to do that, but hey, we got there eventually, you know. <laughs> so uh, let's call up the next slide, and we'll see which one comes up. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit uh, once again. Uh, bang on a little bit about the bottom line, what it's all about. So um, I I put up this little equation, but let, why don't you talk a little bit more about that, Dave, if you may? Well, let's see the slide. Oh yeah, perfect beans equals perfect coffee. Yeah, I, I, 
Well, um, let me start from the bottom up. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Howard and Pat Hall for all their support. I'm doing all of this experimentation on their farm. And uh, Howard's the, the master of uh, solar and off-grid uh, farming. Yeah. Um, so uh, without his, um, his uh, support, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. But, um, you know, I, I'm can, can in I just area... interrupt and add, Can I just interrupt and add? You know, the, uh, the slide we showed of the blue eye and the, the solar panels on the roof and all the conversion right. equipment, that was all Howard. That's and right. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to do this. And That's he's, right. been such a, he's been such a champion of Dave and his coffee farm. And may I add, a real hydrogen champion. Because he's, he's got his pad all ready to go when we put in that first he's hydrogen. About to in, he's about to install it right there, feet from my coffee lab. So it's going to be very interesting. Maybe we'll be roasting coffee with hydrogen. Who knows? But um, so, yeah, it's, it's all about ROI in agriculture. And it's about um, uh, carbon neutral farming, um, carbon negative, because I'm a no-till farm. It's, it's an orchard. And so we're just trapping greenhouse gases. And we got to do something because sure is hot here these days. So um, that's not normal. OK, Dave, one more plug. If you wouldn't mind giving a plug for the University of Hawaii and the well, College of the, uh, CTAR. I, I love CTAR. And I love uh, Andrea Kawabata, who is the uh, extension uh, agent for coffee on the Big Island. She's phenomenal. And without her support, her farm visits, her seminars, her courses, her webinars, uh, her advice, um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be as anywhere near as successful as I am right now. And um, so, bravo, Citar, and bravo, Andrea. And in terms of the University of Hawaii, uh, I love the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and um, oh. and all the. All the efforts of HNEI and uh, and hydrogen and uh, you know we're headed in the right way. I think HNEI is, has been decades ahead of everybody, and now everybody's waking up. But um, and thanks to Mitch Ewan. Well, thank you, Dave. On that really high note, we've come to the end of our uh, uh, session today and end of the interview. So uh, I'd just like to. Uh, Say we've been talking to Dave Donald of Hawaiian Blue Coffee on the electrification of agriculture, in particular Dave's electric tractor, and the attention to detail to get those high-value agricultural products. I mean, just think, if uh, all the uh, coffee growers could embrace this kind of technology uh, and improve their products so they could command these higher prices, we would have a lot of happy farmers here in Hawaii. Okay. So thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, and, Mitch. And so this is Mitch Ewan signing off. We'll be back in two weeks with another exciting session with Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It just gets more exciting every day. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.